All right, so here we are. I'm back again for the video presentation of my clock. Uh, as you can see, there have been a few modifications that I um, that I told you that I included. Um, it's been running since the third week of this term, and it's been keeping pretty accurate time. I'm looking at 9:43 on my clock right now, PM, and that's exactly what the clock is reading. Uh, so it's very accurate, um, and it's been running since the third week of our term. So, uh, I think it's very well tested and, uh, it works great. So some of the modifications that I included is a tic-tac sound that you can hear that's right over here. And what I did was I used a piezo, uh, speaker with a simple uh, common transistor and it's connected directly to the one hertz clock output from the timer which is right here and there's the crystal oscillator and it goes directly to the speaker and it creates a uh, the chirping sound that you hear so it's a pretty cool effect uh, I also included the uh, included a pendulum circuit to go along with the tic tac, and it goes back and forth. And what I used for that was a um, up and down counter, a seventy four hundred series up and down counter, along with a um, multiplexing chip. So it counts from zero to I want to say one to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. It counts from zero to uh, zero to ten, and then back again. <clears throat> uh, and then it goes to the multiplexer circuit. The multiplexer circuit outputs zero to ten uh, individually, lighting each one of the rows of lights, which gives it the back and forth effect. I also included a couple of shift registers uh, for the kickbacks. So I have two shift registers set up in parallel mode uh, and they have a steady output of uh, a digital 15, which is why they're constantly lit on both sides. And um, when the pendulum reaches its point or zero or nine in this case, a zero to ten. So when it hits zero and when it goes to ten, um, it sends a signal to the uh, shift register to shift parallel uh, to s light up the second set of lights, which gives it that kickback effect, which makes it look like it's knocking the pendulum lights back and forth. So it, it, it's uh, something that I was fooling around with. I kind of liked it, so I included it in the design. Um, but uh, th these are a lot of the things that you can do. You can add a, an hourly chime if you wanted to. Uh, you can put a alarm circuit in there, which I think the original uh, request for the project design uh, wanted. But uh, at that point, I was already too far into the prototyping to do a, a alarm circuit because uh, that would have required a, uh, a comparative circuit and another set of uh, seven segment displays to set the alarm and have it go off accordingly to the time that you set. So that, that, that would have cut into the project a little bit for me. I could have done it, but uh, I, I, I think I went uh, a little bit above and beyond what, what was asked for. I also included three single pole double throw switches, which are right here. The top two, the, the one on the left is for fast mode. The one on the right is for slow mode. And then the one on the bottom is for resetting the seconds to zero for accurate um, time setting, which is what I'm about to demonstrate now. So as you can see the different stages, I got the timing stage, which is here. 
then we have the second stage. I'm sorry, yeah, the second stage, which is here, driving the seven segment displays down here. Then we have the minute stage, which is here in the middle, driving the minutes. And then we have the hour stage, which is right here, driving the hour stage. Um, then right over here, it's hard to see that third chip right here on the bottom row there. That is the flip-flop, which is driving the uh, LED light on the seven segment display to read AM or PM. So that, that's pretty much it. Um, I'll turn it around so you can see what I did. I encased it in a uh, an acrylic clear case. Um, this was just something I had laying around the house. I'm going to fix this later on. Uh, but the, the main idea was so that you could see, you know, what was going on with all the wires and everything. And, uh, and it's mounted. So... Um, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to eventually do a nicer case for this, but this is it. This is the clock design. This whole project cost me about $160 to build. Um, and it really didn't take that long. It took me about you know, a couple of weeks. Uh, the testing is what took the longest time because I had to test it adequately. Uh, I've been testing it since the third week of this term. So I think it's, uh, safe to say that this clock does work. The project is a success and I really uh, hope that you guys uh, uh, consider this project for your future students because it's really not that uh, hard to do. It's very inexpensive and it will give your students a hands-on experience. Uh, they don't necessarily have to solder everything like I did and wire wrap. I mean that's something that maybe you can do for a capstone project, I don't know. Um, but at least the breadboard, the breadboarding, uh, you can have them do, uh, which is real cool. And then they can actually do this. And you have to basically wire everything uh, individually. Each chip has its own function. And it really gives you a basic fundamental uh, concept to digital electronics and how microprocessors work. And, um, you know, all, all this that I got right here can be created from a microprocessing chip about the size of a, uh, of a washer, <laughs> of a tiny washer. I mean, uh, electronics has come a long way since uh, 1960s when 7400 series chips were uh, popular um, so all of this could have been put on a really small tiny microprocessing chip uh, but what this does is it gives you the fundamentals on what's going on inside that microprocessor chip so that's what really inspires me and and and, and i just love this so, i mean anyway I hope that you guys would include this uh, or consider it for future classes that you um, conduct at Grantham University. And it gives the students hands-on. The multi-SIM, um, doing this on multi-SIM doesn't work. Uh, it, it, it worked in stages, but uh, to create this whole thing in multi-SIM, it wouldn't work. So. Multi same is it will get you only so far. All right, so to finish the demonstration, what we are going to do is I am going to turn this off. I'm going to remove the power and we are going to start from scratch. That's another thing I want to do too, is I want to create a battery backup for this thing which is something that I will probably uh, do later on when I have time. So the clock automatically starts at 1 p.m. and I have, that, that's something else that I included. I have a, uh, uh, a reset circuit designed with a 5-5 timer. With, and what that does is it delays the initial 
uh, power amp of the chips and it delays everything and it sets it at one at one o'clock uh, automatically so it gives you a it, it, you know just like most clocks when when you uh, lose power your clocks will start at 12 this one starts at one because of the presets on the 74 160 hour stage uh, that preset to zero and one so that's why it's it, 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 it's a preset to one o'clock instead of 12 o'clock so now what we need to do is set the time so the time I have right now let me see let me get my let me get my phone real quick. What did I do with my phone? Just had it. Oh. Try it. Okay. So on my phone, I have an analog clock built into my screen server. It displays digital, but I also have an analog clock. That shows up on my screen server. And I apologize for the video. I know it's kind of hard to see. Um, So there it is. I gotta really get it up close. So the time I have right now is 9.55. So what we wanna do is we wanna set it a minute past. So we're coming up on 9.56 right now. So I don't think I'm gonna be able to do this in time. So what we're gonna do is hit the fast switch because it's already at 1 p.m. We wanna fast forward it to nine. And then now I got the p.m. and the hour set. Now I wanna set the minutes to 56. which is a minute ahead. I'm not gonna make it, so we're gonna have to do 57 because I already went past the minute stage. So we're looking at 57 now. All right, now it's set for 9.57 and the time I have right now is 9.56, I wish, I apologize for the video. So 9.56 and you can see the second hand is coming around to 45 seconds right now. So we're at 9.57. I'm waiting for the second hand to reach 12. Bam. And boom. I now reset the seconds to zero. The time is now 9.57 and 9, 10 seconds, 11, 12, 1, 1. Let me see if I can do it this way. Maybe I can show you. The seconds, you can see the second hand and you can see the seconds on the background on my clock. 34, 35, 37, 38, 39, 40. So it's set precisely to the time on my phone. And it will stay this way. Uh, like I said, I had this thing running for uh, three weeks. Oh, since the third term. And that's how you set the clock. And then you just put it up. Now, if we lose power, um, like I said, I have to get the battery back up for it. But that would be like on. Now, we also have the prototype. So I'm going to turn on my prototype. And
And we're having a little technical difficulty here. Now that's what I don't like about breadboard. Okay, there we go. Breadboards are very unstable. Alright. So, the same thing. So, I actually have it marked off. The top one here is for fast setting. So, I'm going to set it to 9. Oops, I went past. This is not easy. And we got, it's about get, getting ready to go on 10 o'clock. So I'm going to set it to 10 or 1. So I'm going to have to fast forward it. too far. So I got it on Alright, so now the clock just went to 10.01, I'm at 10.02, now we're just going to have to wait for the minute to catch up. Alright, so we're waiting for that minute, that's the, time, that's the clock we're setting it to, we have to wait for it to catch up to the minute advance. Uh, and in the meantime, you want to keep resetting the seconds so that you don't. Uh, go past. Now once we get to 59 I will hit the reset and we should have synchronization. So 52, 4, 5, 56, 57, 58, 59, reset. And there we are. So the prototype works still. <laughs> uh, and it's a breadboard design. And this is also very accurate. I had this running for uh, quite a few days too before I actually um, transferred the design over to a, a soldering PCB, PC board. So that's my demonstration. That is the clock project. And uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, again, it's been a pleasure uh, being a part of the Grantham uh, alumni. Uh, it has been a whole lot of fun. Um, and I'd like to just wish you all a happy new year. And again, please consider using this design for future students. It's, it, it, it's really not that uh, expensive. Uh, you could put it towards their tuition. Uh, I mean, you wouldn't even notice it. Um, and like I said, the bookstore can acquire most of these supplies through any local electronics store. So that's it. Thank you. And... Once again, Happy New Year.